Hi and welcome to the Back to the Basics Visual Studio tutorial. My name is Keith Elder, one of the co-hosts of the Deep Fried Bytes podcast which is geared toward .NET developers. Today what we're going to do is we're going to look at how to use your hammer. Just like carpenters have to learn how to use all of their tools, developers need to know how to learn theirs too. So today we're going to start the very first part of a multi-part series of Visual Studio tutorials. These back to the basics tutorials don't require you to have any previous knowledge. They are geared toward somebody that's trying to learn and we're going to cover things as slow and as methodical as we can. If you want to find more information about these tutorials and get other information, we do suggest you to subscribe to our online podcast. You can do that through iTunes or Zoom at deepfriedbytes.com and you can also subscribe to my blog at keithelder.net. Well, let's get started. So the first question that I usually get when I go out and speak about Visual Studio and, and the .NET platform is what does Visual Studio do? Well, Visual Studio is what we call an IDE and that stands for Integrated Developer Environment. We call it integrated because it's a whole set of tools that we use one user interface to get all of our work done. Some of that work includes debugging applications as well as connecting and managing databases or other servers. For example, with database stuff built into Visual Studio, we can create databases, create tables, drop tables, run queries, and even update our data. We don't have to have another tool installed to do that. We just have one tool. And that's what makes Visual Studio so great. We can also manage all of our projects through source control. If you have Visual Studio Team System, then source control is managed through a product called Team Foundation Server. But you don't have to do that. You can also use plugins which would allow you to uh, put your projects in source control with things like Subversion for example. You also can build and deploy your software deliverables right from Visual Studio. And Visual Studio has a ton of shortcuts and things that we'll be looking at in some later series that would allow you to write code faster. Part of writing applications, you need to write tests to make sure that your applications work. Visual Studio ships with a built-in unit testing framework out of the box. You can also run load tests on your applications to make sure that they're performing correctly and also do further analysis and performance metrics on your applications. As you can see, Visual Studio does a lot, so let's get started. The first thing I want to show you is the start screen of Visual Studio. This is essentially the default starting layout when you install Visual Studio and open it up. This particular version is Visual Studio Team System, which is the commercial version. If you don't want to pay for the commercial version where you don't have a need to, Microsoft ships free versions of Visual Studio called Express. Just go out and use your favorite search engine, type in Visual Studio Express, and then download all of those products that you'd want to use. When you open Visual Studio, there are basically three main sections that you work in the most of the time. The first place is the top. Now at the top of this we see we have a start page that's a tab. And all of the files that we open will also show up in this particular area here in the center. And they will all be of a tab based nature. The left side is dockable windows. These are where different windows are contextually driven based on what you're looking at. For example, if you're editing a web page, the toolbox is going to update and provide you with web type controls. Vice versa, if you're editing a mobile application, a Silverlight application, or a Windows form, the toolbox is going to update based on what you're looking at. On the other side of the screen, we have solutions and projects. Solutions and projects are how we organize our applications and where we work at most of the time. This is where we see all of the files listed in our solution and also our projects. We're going to cover that in a later tutorial. Well, what better way to sort of explore the outer shell of Visual Studio than just do a quick demo? This is the Visual Studio screenshot that we saw earlier. Visual Studio is laid out primarily with toolboxes and things on the left. Our main solution explorer and things are on the right side. All of these windows we are able to size and resize as we like. We'll look at a few more of these features as we go along. On the bottom are, is primarily debug information where we see things like errors that if when we compile our applications we'll see that. We also see output windows and things as well. 
Across the top, we have our menus where we can create new, new projects and new solutions as well as save stuff. We can also visit our recent projects that we've opened. And the tools menu provides a lot of different things for allowing us to connect to different servers, databases, as well as customize Visual Studio. Visual Studio is incredibly customizable. As a matter of fact, if you want to play around with some stuff, one of the best ways to do that is look at the import and export settings feature. If you go out and search on your favorite search engine for Visual Studio themes or settings, you'll find a lot of different settings files that you can import. For example, maybe you like to program with your text in a dark background, or maybe you like the default white. Whatever flavor or color palette that you like, somebody has probably already created one for you. So go out and play around with those. It's a great way to experience it. One of the things that we do in Visual Studio as developers is we kind of customize our environment. One of the things that we can do that with is like, for example, the toolbox. The toolbox, as I mentioned earlier, allows you to drag and drop things around based on the given context. However, there are cases to where you may want to move these windows around. So for example, here are some things you can do with customizing your layout in Visual Studio. Currently by default I have this set to auto hide. What auto hide means is if I move off or someplace else it's going to hide that window automatically as you see there. Well what I may want to do is pin it down. And when I pin that particular window down I can see that I have different tabs at the bottom listed. So here we have toolbox. Well, what if I want to put that somewhere else? If I make that particular window floating, then set it to dockable. I can take that window and move it around anywhere inside of the IDE. I can move it here, or I can move it here, or down here. Any place you see one of the arrows, you can drag that particular window to. For example, if I want to dock the toolbox on this side, I'm going to open up this particular window and then drag and drop that in. I'm going to set that to dock and then drag the toolbox in. Now my toolbox is on the right. Another thing you can do is set the window to floating and take the windows and move them off to other screens. So in this case, if we wanted to move toolbox off to another window to another screen, we can totally do that. We can also slide it back in and then set it to redock and move it back to where we want it. Visual Studio is very smart in its layout. It remembers your layouts when you debug or whenever you're just developing. So if you are debugging an application and you move some window around, the next time you debug, Visual Studio is going to put that window back where it was at. Don't worry if you get your windows all kind of messed up. Sometimes that, that happens. The way to reset those is go up to Window at the top of the screen and then choose Reset Window Layout. Choosing that will allow you to reset your window layout very, very easily. We've just restored the default layout for Visual Studio. Well, hopefully this tutorial gives you an idea about how to use Visual Studio. Again, my name is Keith Elder. You can find more information about how to program on the .NET platform by listening to our podcast at deepfriedbytes.com as well as subscribing to my blog at keithelder.net. Stay tuned for some future tutorials from Visual Studio, and as always, happy coding.